Okay, so we are on 1.5 today. We're talking about parametric equations. Parametric comes from the word parameter. So, parameter. Parameter means that, you know, it's kind of like a knob that you turn. So, like, if you have a machine, it would be like one of the knobs you turn on there. It's a parameter that you're changing. So, parametric equation is... It will define x and y values in terms of a parameter. And that parameter, usually we say t. t usually means time. So what does that mean? Uh, usually, when you are talking about uh, position and space, it's always x and y. Right? x is the horizontal, y is the vertical. And uh, we don't actually think about it that x and y are actually could be moving according to time. Right? So, like, for example, this person who's kicking a soccer ball, at t equals zero, that's before he starts kicking, so the ball is at next to his foot. Now, once he kicks it, then at t equals one second, it's probably somewhere here, two seconds somewhere here, three seconds somewhere here. So then x and y can be talked about in terms of a something else, which is time. So then we're saying, what is the horizontal movement with respect to time? What is the y movement with respect to time? And both of them could be with uh, respect to time. So for example, this one. You have an equation where x is in terms of this variable, t, and y is in terms of this variable, t, and both of them are moving according to time. So for example, like something like this. Uh, you guys probably have seen something like, <clears throat> oh, like a rocket launch from like a very old movie they would say something like t minus two seconds, t minus one second. So like t minus two seconds was like, sorry, uh, somewhere here, t minus one second, and then t minus zero second, and then so on. And then so basically they're describing where this object is with rel relative to time. Oh, at this time, it's here. At this time, it's here. At this time, it's here. Does that kind of make sense? So. We can kind of do the same thing. Now, you're given two equations where both of them are in terms of this parameter called t. And they describe the horizontal movement and the vertical movement. If we want to figure out what this actually looks like in space, where t goes from negative 3 all the way to 3, and then we have an x equation, a y equation, all you have to do is just plug it in. So for example, when t is equal to negative 3, you just plug it into this equation to find the horizontal movement. So that's going to be negative 2, right? So negative 3 plus 1, we're going to get negative 2. We can do the same thing with the y equation. So wherever I have a t, I plug in negative 3. So negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3. That is, uh, sorry, I can't think, 3. So that's actually going to give me a coordinate negative 2, 3. So at t equals negative 3 seconds, this particle or object, whatever it is, is at the place negative 2, 3 in space. So what you can do now is fill out this, the rest of this table. Um, you're going to find the x movement, the y movement. That's going to give you an actual coordinate. And once you do finish all that, you can go down here and then graph it. That's going to show you how this particle or object is moving in space. Okay, once you find those coordinates, um, go ahead and graph it if you have not. <clears throat> okay, you can see that you can pretty much connect the dots together with a nice curve. And what kind of, what kind of shape is that curve?
Huh? X squared? So a parabola, right? So can you write an equation that describes this curve without t? Probably, right? Because you have a you have just the x and y coordinate. Once you solved it, you basically didn't have t in there anymore. If I just write an equation of a parabola, I can probably write an uh, equation that describes exactly that curve. Now, how do we do that uh, without graphing it first? We have these two equations. The question is, how do I write one in terms of the other without t? Because we have three variables right now, x, y, and t. How do I get rid of t so that it's only one in terms of the other? Meaning, something like y in terms of x or x in terms of y. But having no t variable in there. How do I do that? Oh, great idea. How do you do that? How do you execute? Okay, I think what Aaron is trying to say is write t yeah. in terms of x, yeah. like that. And then plug that into the uh, y equals t. Yeah. Yes, that is exactly how you do it. So that way, t will be gone because you already solved it in terms of something else. So that's x minus 1 squared plus 2 times x minus 1. If we actually solve it, so basically it's y in terms of x, right? And then if you try to solve it, you'll see that you get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 2x minus 2. And then if we try to simplify all that, the 2x cancels, so we have a x squared minus 1. So x squared minus 1 is supposed to be our graph. Let's double check to see if it's true. So if you go all the way down here to that parabola again, is this, does it look like an x squared minus 1 graph? Yeah, it's basically the x squared graph where you transform by uh, moving it down 1, right? Which it is. Um, now, let's try to do that on your calculator. So the calculator does graph all these uh, parametric functions. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to mode. Mode is right next to second. Okay, when you go to mode, if you scroll down, it's the fourth one from the top. It has these uh, things available, F-U-N-C, P-A-R, P-O-L, and S-E-Q. Whatever is highlighted in black is the one that you are using right now. You're, you should be in F-U-N-C, which is like the normal function. What you want to do is go to P-A-R, which is parametric. So you're going to scroll all right one and then press enter. Once you press enter, the, it's going to change to highlighting the parametric. Now when you go to go back to y equals, which is on the top, <coughs> it's now going to show you x, 1, t, and then y, 1, t. So both of them are in terms of a parameter called t, instead of in before you had an x. Did you have a question? You guys are okay? No? Question? Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to graph those two equations. Oh, yeah. Or you can talk to Stephanie. She has the same calculator. Okay, so now you're going to graph these two equations. So in x1, t, you're going to type in t plus 1. Now you may ask, where is t? t is the same variable, but because you switch to parametric, it will automatically change to t. 
So wherever you use to press the button for X, it's going to automatically be T. Okay, so X, uh, T plus 1. And then for Y of uh, T, it's going to be T squared plus 2T. Okay, now when you graph, because uh, the way our table is set up, it's from negative 3 to 3. It's not graphing every single number possible, but from negative 3 to 3, where your, your increment is one integer at a time. So you need to tell your calculator to do the same thing. To do that, you're going to go to the window button. Oops. When you go to the window button, you can change it. So at this time t min is probably set at 0, but you don't want a 0, you want to start at negative 3. So type in negative 3. Okay, a little kind of important thing on your calculator is your calculator, all the ti's, does not like minus sign as negative sign. So you have to press the negative sign, which is right next to the decimal. Okay, so that's minus 3, or negative 3. The next thing is t max. t max, in this case, is 3. T step means how far is your first number from the next number. That is every one number. Because you're going negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, so on. So it's every one number. Okay, now uh, click trace or graph. It doesn't really matter. You should see that parabola or hook. So that is a very quick lesson about parametric equation. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next part, which is inverse. Okay, inverse. So if you have a function, let's say the original function, let's say the original function is f of x, the inverse function is f inverse x. When you see that negative 1, that does not mean, this does not mean 1 over f of x, okay? No, no, no. Don't do it that way. <laughs> so for example, if you see y to the negative 1 and y to the negative 1 x, they are very different. If you see y to the negative 1, that is 1 over y. If you see this, that means inverse function. Okay, so 1 over y, that's just the reciprocal. Y to the negative 1 of x, that is the inverse function. That means we took the original function and we did something to it. It's the inverse. And it's a function, not just a number. So you got to remember that. Now, what's special about inverse function? First, in the inverse function, if you have, in the original function, if you have a and b, the inverse function would be ba. So basically, you switch x and y. Okay, so in the original function, if you have a and b, then in the inverse relation or inverse function, you're going to have BA. And another thing applies. If in a function, you have a domain and range, in the inverse function, it's going to reverse, so range domain. Okay. And if that happens, we call that one to one. One to one function means that Every x only has one y. Every y, uh, yeah. Every one, what x has only has one y. Then that means if you have f of a number, which is the x part. You remember this part is x. This part is y. So f of a number equals b. F of x equals y. Then in the inverse function, if you put b inside, you should get a out. In the original function, x and y are related this way. In the inverse function, you switch y and x. Now, if you are given a function, how do you check to see if the inverse is going to be a function? You will always have an inverse, but it doesn't mean the inverse will be a function. Okay, every function has an inverse, but the inverse might not be a function. Uh, it's kind of hard to think about it that way. So if you want to really quickly check to see if the inverse is an inverse function, we use the horizontal line test.
or if we want to draw the inverse, we reflect it over the line y equals x. So there's a lot of things we need to remember about the inverse function. So for example, x squared, which is this graph that is shown here. We're going to answer a few questions. First, is f of x a function? So this is f of x. Is this a function? Yes, because it passes through the vertical line test, right? Second question, is inverse f, is the inverse of this function a function? Remember to check, we use the horizontal line test. So is this going to pass the horizontal line test? Passing horizontal line test is the same idea as passing vertical line test. So is it going to go through more than one point? Yes. So that's not a function. So if you draw horizontal lines, it's going to pass through more than one point. So the inverse is not going to be a function. So we already know that before we figure out how it looks like. Now, graphing it. OK. Did Aaron just say, oh, man? Uh, OK, let's graph it. I'm going to show you the ta table weight, tabular weight, and then I'm going to show you just uh, reflecting over y equals x. OK, so x, and then let's say f of x. This is the x squared graph, so that's a pretty easy graph to reconstruct. So if we start from negative 2 all the way to 2, f of x is just basically squaring that number. So we get 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. This is in the original function. If we find the inverse function, Inverse function, we're going to switch x and y. So f of x becomes my new x, and then x becomes my new f of x. Basically, I switch x and y. So this is going to be 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. This is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So I switch x and y. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these new points that I switched. So I start at uh, 4 and go to negative 2. Oh, I didn't go down enough. And then 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. OK, so that's my inverse relation. It's not even a function, right? You can see that it's going to not pass. You guys got it? Yeah. Well, uh, not all the time. You're, you're not out, uh, just always just flipping it. The other way to do it is reflecting across the x, y equals x line. Can you guys show me how y equals x line look like? This is the diagonal line, right? So what you can do is draw a diagonal line. And then you're basically saying, this diagonal line is now my mirror. And then I am reflecting everything across. And you can see that it does reflect across. Right? Every point reflects across. Got it? OK. Let's try another one. x cubed. Is x cubed a function? Yes. Is the inverse going to be a function? Yes, because if you draw horizontal lines, it will only pass through one point. Next, draw the inverse function. So reflect it over y equals x. It will look something like this. Once I help you solve it tomorrow, we're actually going to solve the inverse function. You'll see why it actually has to look like this.